All right, let's talk about AlphaGo Zero. What is it? What should you know about it? First thing you should know, it's created by a company called DeepMind. DeepMind was a British company that got bought up by Google, which is now called Alphabet. According to this little thing, it's part of them both. Multiple parents, okay. Anyhow, um, they use neural nets. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on neural nets sometime, but basically they use a technique that a lot of people call machine learning or artificial intelligence but really it's just very, very fancy statistics. Um, what is Go? Go is a traditional Chinese game that is very popular, more complicated than chess. Tons more moves than chess. Um, it was part, like the last bastion of humans could still beat machines for a very long time. And people thought we were still 10 years away from a machine that could reasonably play Go because it was so complicated. However, last year, there was a thing called AlphaGo. It beat Lee Sedol, who was the world champion at, at Go. It beat him uh, four games to one in 2016. AlphaGo Zero is the latest thing that happened in a little, uh, like a couple of weeks ago. And it's basically, um, unlike AlphaGo, AlphaGo trained on millions of examples of real humans playing and then was able to use that information to play against people. AlphaGo Zero was literally only given the rules of Go and played against itself for the last 40 days. Um, the thing is, after about three days, it could beat all humans. Um, and it's been, it beat the AlphaGo that beat Lee, right? AlphaGo Lee, 100 games to zero. It beat their other version of AlphaGo called AlphaGo Master in 21 days, and now it's the best thing after 40 days. What's interesting about it is that it uses a lot less resources, um, so it's much more efficient, uh, both in power and in number of what they call TPUs, which are TensorFlow processing units, so special chips that help it do these computations faster. It uses a lot less of them. Um, and it uses a technique called reinforcement learning. So it basically plays against itself. And as they explain in the DeepMind video, um, it basically, at every level, has an opponent that's pretty equally matched. And so that kind of pushes it forward to get better and better. Let's look at this. Uh, okay, so that's the video. Here's a nice little infographic. Right, so it basically started out with nothing. Had to learn, all, it was like randomly playing against itself. Got better and better and better and better. Eventually it got to the point where it surpasses all versions. It's probably the best player in the world. And that's all very interesting. Okay, um, this is what I was saying about power consumption. So it started off using a lot of GPUs, which are graphical processing units. Um, then they switched over to TPUs. So they 48 of them. This is what was used last year. And now they're down to four TPUs and it beats all of them. Um, yeah, this, ELO is the rating how would you determine your ranking and go so yep it's the best that's fantastic um yeah that's interesting that's the same video from before okay so yeah it's not learning from humans at all they even tried a version of alpha go zero where they gave it um human player data and it actually learned a lot faster because it kind of was starting off better but over the long run it actually performed worse so yep best to just start with the rules and let it figure it all out for itself um, let's see. Yep, 3,000 years in 40 days. It's a pretty good deal. Fairly cheap. Um, so this is not that interesting. This is kind of interesting. Okay, so what could you do with the thing like AlphaGo Zero? Well, if the algorithm is general purpose, that it's not just tied to Go, which it seems like it is because, um, they literally only gave it the rules of go and then let it play against itself for 40 40 days um you could use this to do all kinds of really good things like protein folding and trying to figure out uh how the climate works as i mentioned over here um but you could also do like extract more ad dollars from consumers right they also had i think i don't know if it was in this article but another article but they used similar types of technology to cut down uh their energy costs for data centers but you could also use it for really evil things right 
if you've ever heard a politician say something like, we play to the edges of the box, like what are the rules? Or if you've, if you've ever dealt with lawyers who are extremely litigious or, or, or people who follow things to the T, so it's like, oh yeah, 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 it's not what you meant, but that was the, no, that's the black and white rule. This is an example of a type of technology that can really figure out what they can explore the search space relatively well uh, if there are easily encodable strict rules. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, yes, well, oh, that yeah, there was cut data center costs. Um, it's very interesting. This is the first time that I've really, well, the second time actually, that I've actually felt like, okay, this is kind of what an artificial intelligence should look like. It should be a general purpose algorithm that is not tied to a specific domain. Because previously we had like, oh, this is how you recognize words, and this is how you recognize cats, and this is how you recognize this other thing. But it was not general purpose. It's not like kids don't know, for example, that that's a cat or a, a, a dog or whatever. They learn through lots of examples, and they can learn lots of different things. So if, if AlphaGo Zero, if that algorithm is sufficiently general purpose, we could really start to see the same algorithm learn lots of different kinds of things. And if it can integrate them, because I have, still haven't seen a lot of sensory integration things, but if you integrate them all together, now we're talking about a real kind of artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching.